and welcome along to Diecast Rest Days with me, Jason. I have for you today a very tired example of a Matchbox MB207 Ferrari F40. The casting was in the Matchbox mainline between 1988 and 2000. This one in red with the large all yellow Ferrari emblem on the bonnet and six spoke gold half moon wheels would have been numbered MB70 in the rest of world line from 1994, looking closer to this. This of course is what the casting is based on. Initially entered at MB24, the original F40 casting had a Ferrari Tampo on the hood and eight dot wheels for the first four years. Up until 1994, it could only be found in red. Then the Tyco era really kicked in and it could now be found in some truly terrible liveries. It did however receive some extra detailing in the US only collector's choice line from 1994. It otherwise remained in colours that were absolute abominations until 1997, coincidentally the year Mattel purchased Tyco. 1997 saw it return to solid colours with additional tampos, slightly more tasteful than the clashing bright colours seen previously. It also appeared in the Premier World Class series with extra detailing and chunky rubber wheels. By 1999, it had gone full circle and returned to its original red before production ceased the year after. I'm having to bend the iconic rear spoiler flat again as it had been pretty significantly crushed. Some straightening by hammering and adjusting with pliers soon fixes the issue. My casting today will naturally be returning to red. As such, this build will effectively be a resto mod, just making some subtle improvements and adjustments on the original recipe to really bring it to life. I'm hoping that it is an even better looking model than those found in the limited World Class series. So let's remove what's left of that red paint. As I'm sure we are all aware, the Ferrari F40 was the last Ferrari car to be personally approved by Enzo Ferrari before his death in 1988. The F40 was born as a development of the 288 GTO Evoluzione, a car that had been destined to compete on the world's rally stages. That was until Group B was cancelled in 1986. Looking to leave a lasting legacy, Enzo allowed for the Evoluzione development to continue for a road car. The body of the new car was designed by Pietro Camadella of Pininfarina, under the watchful eye of the departing Aldo Broveroni. Nicola Materazzi, who had been a development engineer on the Evoluzione, continued his work on the F40. Enzo Ferrari demanded that the car be completed within 11 months, ready for summer 1987. The engine was an enlarged 2.9-litre version of the 288 GTO's twin-turbocharged V8. The body was made from Kevlar, carbon fibre and aluminium panels for high strength and low weight. The windows were polycarbonate. To further aid this weight reduction, the vehicle had no audio system, glove box, door handles, panels, trim or carpets. Pirelli even developed P0 tyres especially for the new car in order to handle the 471 horsepower output, more typically associated with racing cars. All cars left the factory in traditional Rosso Corsa and were set for left-hand drive. At least seven were later modified to right-hand drive for the Sultan of Brunei. The F40 was so named to honour the 40th anniversary of the first Ferrari-badged car. It was unveiled on the 21st of July 1987 at the Civic Centre in Maranello. The unveiling was delayed by two months. It had originally been intended to be presented at the Frankfurt Motor Show, but it was delayed due to Fiat showcasing the new Alfa Romeo 164. On its unveiling, the F40 received a mixed reception. Gordon Murray panned the car, describing it as a big go-kart with a plastic body on it, but said it was the lack of weight that makes the Ferrari so exciting. Car and driver called it a mix of terror and sheer excitement to drive. Despite critical reviews, the F40 holds a legacy amongst car aficionados as one of the greatest road-going Ferraris of all time. Many compared it to its contemporary, the Porsche 959, 
but the F40 was more raw and visceral compared to the Porsche's refinement. In total, between 1987 and 1992, 1,315 F40s were manufactured. This despite planned production of just 400 units. It was priced five times the figure of its predecessor, the 288 GTO, when it went on sale. The F40 was cemented in popular culture when it appeared in a series of contemporary video games, including Turbo Outrun, The Dual Test Drive 2, and Outrun Europa. But now, let us turn our attention to this build. I won't be using these six-spoke half-moon wheels, but I really fancied restoring them in their original gold colour. They've turned out looking really rather effective, having been filled in using my Artistro paint pen. The rear grille helps secure the base and body. It also includes the rear light clusters. I've laid down a base of Molotow Chrome, and then I've run over this using orange and red Sharpies. Over that goes the enclaved reversing lights, more Molotow. This produces a quite realistic looking result. Next, I turn my attention to detailing the body. The F40 has this black skirt surrounding it, so I fill the cast lines with black 0.7mm Artistro paint. There's a lot of real estate to cover, including the hood latches. I also draw in a touch for the air scoops, only on the darkest, most terminal point though. I'll use Citadel Gloss to fade them later on. Like I said, there's a lot of ground to cover, but the model is so well cast, it is quite a natural and, dare I say it, easy process. It is a deep groove that the pen smoothly follows. I also add some black to the central exhaust exit. Here I use my yellow version of the same Artistro pen to dab on a Ferrari emblem. Next, Molotow is used on the side repeaters, door locks and Pininfarina badge ahead of the rear side air intake. The process is repeated on the other side. The prancing horse is crudely drawn in with my 0.2mm Micron pen. Then it's back to the Sharpie to colour in these side repeaters orange. And then some more yellow Artistro and Micron pen for the Ferrari emblems on each wing. The last job to tackle is reinforcing cast lines and enhancing details with some Citadel Gloss Null Oil. You'll have seen there, I was regularly changing between brushes depending on what areas needed detailing. But with all that done, I insert the plastic window piece which includes the headlights, followed by the interior incorporating the engine, and then finally slot in the base with custom wheels already attached. Now all I have to do is secure the front with a screw. This is how my Matchbox Ferrari F40 looked when I found it. It was in a very scratched, play-worn state. It had also had its distinctive rear wing crushed and bent out of shape. To me, this is a classic Matchbox casting of the modern era, and it was a shame to see it in this state. So I repaired the damage, repainted it red, added in the detail, and fitted some authentic wheels, and now it's something the old man Ferrari would have been proud to own. The Tamiya TS8 was made for this build, Italian red has never looked better. I replaced the giant hood emblem with a smaller central prancing horse, and replaced those scuffed half moon wheels with some realistic looking deep dish five spokes. 
The Citadel oil has enhanced the already brilliant casting lines, while my additions with the Artistro pen really help complete the look. There were tiny bonus touches here and there, like the door locks, hood latches, Pininfarina badge, plus the customary wiper and rear view mirror. I'd say this now looks the real deal. Tell me what you think in the comments and leave a like while you're at it. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? Hit the bell icon to stay up to date with my latest works. And don't forget to check out Patreon too for exclusive previews just for members. But all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.